Welcome back to the channel. This is a channel dedicated not only to my 2012 Jeep Rubicon, but Jeeps in general and how people just empty every pocket to keep their passion for their Jeep alive. So the first thing I did to my 2012 Rubicon was lift it, put on 35s, and install the front and rear Smittybilt XRC bumpers. To save my flimsy stock tailgate, I went with a rear bumper that had an integrated tire carrier. It served me well for about five years, but then it started to sag. At about the same time, it also started to rattle and squeak like crazy, which really started to annoy me. It also started to annoy the Popo, and got me pulled over more than once for an obscured license plate. Okay, so I got pulled over six times. And next week I have to go to the police station to get an inspection, or else I get a really big ticket. I might be a glutton for punishment here, but I opted to go with another Smitty Built product, their XRC Heavy Duty Tailgate. Unlike the stock tailgate, this one can actually handle the weight of up to a 37 inch spare tire. It also has an integrated third brake light, but I'm not planning on using that. Enough of that, time for the tear down. So some of the bolts were just a little bit rusty. And maybe I broke one or two. For anyone watching this and thinking of getting the XRC bumper with the integrated tire rack, do yourself a favor and lube it more than never. I wasn't sure how heavy the bumper was as it was nearly 10 years ago when I first installed it. It's awkward, but the removal as well as the installation can be a one person job. Now it's time to remove the old tailgate, but first a little bit about the tail strap. The OEM tail strap. This mechanism is used for limiting how much your tailgate opens up. I opted not to install it because I don't use my tailgate that much and when I do use it, I don't swing it open like an idiot. You have to modify the tail strap slightly. You need to pull off the passenger tail light to do so. What you need to do is drill a 316 size hole in the OEM strap. Then you fit the supplied heavy duty stopper into it. Do not remove the tail strap from your Jeep. Try your best to do the modification required while it's in the Jeep through the hole where your passenger tail light is. It's not fun, but it's a whole lot less painful than trying to feed that tail strap through those roller bearings once it's removed. It's a real bitch. Do yourself a favor. Do not remove the tail strap from your Jeep. Now to continue with the removal of the stock tailgate. Using door panel pliers, I removed the stock wiring harness, and then I pulled it out. Using a plastic pry bar, the hinge covers just popped right off. And so did the gate. Once the gate was off, I transferred the locking mechanism from the OEM gate to the XRC gate. This was actually really easy and the October 2018 instructions are actually pretty good here. Next up, the handle and key lock. Again, this was super basic. The most difficult part was probably putting on the retaining clip for the lock, but I had a good set of pliers, so it was actually not too bad. With everything transferred over to the XRC tailgate, it's time to attach it to Ruby. At 75 pounds, this isn't a fun job to do alone, but it can be done. Now, I would have loved to have shown you how to align the XRC gate, but my initial settings were absolutely perfect. And the October 2018 instructions are actually pretty clear on this. All you need is a piece of cardboard to protect the finish and a pry bar. When installing the carrier mounts, there are two spacers that are placed on the passenger side mounts, only on the passenger side mounts. Be sure to use the longer bolts on this side and torque all eight bolts down to 24 foot pounds. After cleaning the gate off a bit, I tape the wires to the top of the gate. You will need to splice in about six inches of wire. I did this one wire at a time so I wouldn't mix them up. I don't know if this is Jeep's fault or Smittybilt's fault, but either way, you have to make your wiring harness just a little bit longer. This is where I have my first complaint. The M3 2mm 
button head screws. This is just a fail. Do yourself a favor, replace those button head screws with a three millimeter cap head screw. With the gate successfully installed, it's time to put on my new rear bumper. What the f That's right. The online store I bought all my Smitty Bill goodies from sent me the wrong bumper. They didn't send me a bumper at all. They, they sent me body armor for a four-door. Not mentioning any names, though. Four-wheel parts did make things right. They gave me a bunch of swag, some stickers, t-shirts. It's all good. It happens. Now it's time to finish the install. I was still doing all this work solo. It's doable, but if you have a friend that can help you out with the bumper, definitely ask them. I did cheat just a little bit. I ended up using a jack underneath the hitch to lift the bumper, making it just a bit easier to get those side bolts through. I left them a little bit loose so it'd be easier to get the four main bolts through. This is the ugliest part of the entire install. There really isn't a lot of room to work with here. Using my knee, I pushed up on the bumper and this helped feed three of the long bolts through. The last one needed a bit of twisting to get through, but I got it and tightened everything down to spec. The spare went on just fine and my settings were close. The vertical settings were fine, one up from the bottom. I did have to move the horizontal bolts to the outside row as the spare initially hit the bumper. I put my D-rings back on to complete the install. Everything looks phenomenal. I absolutely love the look of the Smitty Built XRC stuff. Everything looks and sounds great. It's time for a road test. On normal roads, the tire hardly moved. On bumpy roads, the tire did move around a bit, and there was a bit of a squeak and a rattle from the D-rings. I could not hear any of this from the inside, though. Inside, all I heard was the sweet hum of tires. Whereas before, with the separate tire carrier, I could hear it rattle constantly. Overall, I'm really happy with the installation and the performance of this product. For those interested in some weight specs, the OEM gate weighs around 40 pounds. The XRC tire carrier comes in at 57 pounds for a total of just under 100 pounds. The XRC heavy duty tailgate with integrated tire carrier comes in at 74 and a half pounds. So this mod netted me a savings of around 25 pounds. I don't really care about the weight, but some people do, and those are the specs. Now I'm sure all the internet keyboard warriors still living in their mama's basement, still wearing their pajamas, are gonna be all over me on this one. Not only did I torque everything down to spec, I red Loctited everything. The only thing I didn't use red on was the M3 screws. I have no intentions of taking this apart and I don't want any squeaks and I don't want any rattles. Install time. This is a tough one for me. I'm not 100% sure because I was setting up shots, making sure lighting was adequate for this video, etc. So I don't really know exactly what the install time was. Most of the four-wheel drive shops around town said that it was around six hours. I think I did it in closer to four, but just plan on a six-hour install. Now I have to say, the instructions that this came with are absolute rubbish. They don't even include all the steps. Do yourself a favor, go online, Download the instructions with revision number 102218. Those would be the instructions from October 22nd, 2018. They're not great, but at least they're complete. Overall, I'm really happy with the installation of my XRC heavy duty tailgate and the rear bumper. I hope you like this video. If you find it useful, share it with your buddies, hit like, and don't forget to subscribe. Corey out.
What's next?